Hello everybody, I know I'm really late to the party on this one, but my day job has been keeping me very busy of late. But finally I got time to talk about Avengers Endgame. This was of course directed by the Russo brothers and stars Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth, Mark Ruffalo, Scarlett Johansson, and many, many people. This picks up shortly after the end of Avengers Infinity War, where Thanos removed half the population of the entire freaking universe with what has come to be known as the Snapture. And it's up to the remaining Avengers to undo this mess, but of course they can't just go beat the shit out of Thanos and take the glove back, because that wouldn't be much of a movie. Instead, we get a time heist, going back to the past to fix the present. But again, they can't just go back in time, beat the shit out of Thanos, and take the glove. It's not that simple. Because apparently Back to the Future lied to us. I feel betrayed. It really is amazing to think that 10 years worth of movies, with multiple movies released every year, have been building up to this. I mean, there have been some long-running franchises before, but there really never has been anything quite like the MCU, and in all likelihood there never will be. That of course has not stopped anyone else from trying, DC is certainly trying to create their own universe, and it seems like they're finally on the right track. Universal tried with the Dark Universe, and, well, <laughs> we know how that went, don't we? But anyway, while the MCU is by no means done, there are still more movies to come, this does feel like the end of an era, and boy did it go out with a bang. I like this one a lot. Making a three-hour movie that manages to be entertaining for the full three hours is no easy task, but boy did they pull it off. It starts out feeling very different from the average superhero movie. It's a very somber note to begin with, which makes sense given what happened at the end of Infinity War. Half the people on Earth are just gone, and the ones that are left are not taking it terribly well as one might expect. Some are coping about as well as they possibly can, like Cap and Black Widow are doing reasonably well. Hawkeye is not coping well, that dude is broken. Thor has gone through some interesting changes, to say the least. I was not expecting that at all, but, you know, it kind of works. As silly as it may be on the surface, traumatic events change you, and not always for the better, and I think that's something a lot of people can relate to. Tony seems to be doing remarkably well, though that's largely because he's just cut himself off from the rest of the world. After all, nothing looks bad when you got your head stuck in the sand. And that's pretty much the first act in a nutshell. While it does have a few comedic moments here and there, it's very emotional and handles the emotions quite well. Now, based on some comments I saw leading up to the movie's release, some people were worried the movie might tread into Thanos was right territory, which I may be in the minority on this, but I never really got that impression from Infinity War at all. Of course, Thanos thought he was right, but not for one second did I ever think we were supposed to agree with him. My takeaway was, this guy is fucking insane, and we are supposed to see his vision for a better world as the farce it is. All that being said, if you were worried that the movie might suggest Thanos had a point, rest assured they make it quite clear that he is the biggest asshole in the history of the universe. Even Thanos eventually realizes he was wrong. Of course, he learns completely the wrong lesson from this, because again, he's insane, but there it is. And then we get to the time heist, which is all kinds of fun. We got all sorts of cameos from the earlier movies, some of which I did not expect, and we got to relive events from the previous movies from a completely different angle, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And we got some more emotional moments from Tony and Thor. Those two bear most of the emotional weight from this movie, as does Nebula a bit in the second half. Nebula has been through a lot, and in multiple timelines. And of course, we get the big climactic battle at the end, which makes the Battle of Helm's Deep look like a playground scuffle, and it is glorious. So many cool moments from pretty much everyone in the MCU. I don't think it's a spoiler to say that they do bring everyone back eventually, because of course they do. Wouldn't be much of a movie if they didn't. Pretty much every major character gets their chance to shine, and they even worked in a nice little girl power moment for good measure. I dug it. But my personal favorite moment, without spoiling anything, in case there is someone out there watching this video who somehow has not seen this movie yet, was when the one guy did the thing with the thing. 
I described this moment using those exact same words to a friend of mine a few days ago, and he knew exactly what I was talking about. I have been waiting so long for him to do the thing with the thing, and finally he did the thing with the thing. I've heard stories of that moment getting applause, which did not happen in my theater, but there was an audible gasp. That might have just been me. This was so satisfying, I enjoyed it very much, and... 10 years worth of movies, they still managed to surprise me once or twice. Again, I'm probably not spoiling anything by telling you there are some people who die for really reals and are not just snapped back into existence, because if no one could die permanently, then you don't really have any stakes. I will not say who died permanently, but I will say there was at least one person I did not expect to die who did, and at least one person I did expect to die who did not. Although I still was pretty satisfied with how they ended up. If you somehow have not seen this movie, you really should, it's great. If you have somehow not seen any Marvel movies before this one, I would say this is probably not the best point to start with. You should probably at least see Infinity War first, because that sets up the events in Endgame. And to give you some background on the other characters, I would also recommend watching the first Iron Man, the first Captain America, the first Avengers, uh, probably Guardians of the Galaxy as well, and maybe if you have time, Thor Ragnarok. Also, for the first time ever, you don't have to stay through the credits if you don't want to, because there are no post credit scenes. Which I think shocked the hell out of everyone in my theater. There was a post credit sound effect, but that was it. And that's all I have to say about Avengers Endgame. Till next time, take care.